guys. So, this morning I recorded a 12 minute video and as I got to work I uploaded it and then after work I went to listen back to it and you can't hear me. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was because I, um, pardon the view by the way, this is, you're in my lap. Um, but, yeah, so, I don't know if it's because the aux cord was plugged in or the blanket was muffling or what the deal was, so I'm trying again and I might just be talking to myself again and have to delete it, but we'll go from there. So, uh, the main thing that I had covered was emotional intelligence, EQ, self-awareness. I've talked about it before. I'll talk about it until I'm blue in the face. Um, but nothing I had to say was to help people get better self-aware or emotional intelligence. Uh, it's just come up quite a few times at work this week, so I thought that was interesting. And I've been getting that like belly button pull to record a video. So I figure I'll just hit record and ramble and sometimes some good stuff comes out. So um, one of the things I had said was that I've noticed something in people and that's that either they are self-aware or they aren't. And if you say self-awareness or you talk about emotional uh, intelligence or EQ to anybody that has any kind of self-awareness and you say hey you know you should study this topic or you should learn more about this topic or you should read a book on this topic chances are they're probably gonna take that advice or they're probably going to be like yeah I want to know more I want to gain more or you know be more uh, of that but if you say that to someone who is not self-aware at all and has no emotional intelligence and very little EQ other than self-consciousness um, about their appearance, per se, they have no interest in that. That means nothing to them. That doesn't spur them to go do that. Um, it's an interesting thing. They either are self-aware enough to know that they... Um, can expand that and broaden that or they're so lacking in that that they that means nothing to them it, it doesn't interest them in any way to become more self-aware or have more emotional intelligence um, it's quite interesting so I've been kind of talking about personalities a lot at work because I deal with a lot of personalities and I have to adjust to a lot of personalities and sometimes you have to play to certain personalities in certain ways. And so, um, you know, for me, I feel like that's because I have some emotional intelligence and some self-awareness. And I also love studying people. And so I have, I don't want to say the word manipulate, but um, I have learned how to work with certain personalities and what kinds of things will um, get their attention or pique their interest or um, uh, build a rapport if it's a rapport I need to build um, you know those kinds of things so I just find that interesting um, I had also talked about and I'm going to repeat this because um, I I feel like this is shareable information um, my husband hold on one second I'm merging onto a big freeway. Um, my husband had bought these yellow tinted glasses for driving at night. And I really didn't think much of it. I think he originally did it um, for riding the motorcycle at night. Um, but at some point, for some reason, it came up while we were in our regular vehicle. And uh, I think I had been complaining about the lights on the back road on the way home because I drive I was on night shift so I was always driving home in the dark and the headlights coming at me really fuck with my fuck with my driving um, when you got headlights coming at you and people not turning their brights off or some of these new headlights in these newer cars are like 
ridiculously bright. And so he was like, well, why don't you try these and see what you think? So I tried them and I don't, on the highway, it's not such a big deal because the highway is divided enough that there's not headlights directly in my eyeballs. But as soon as I hit that back road, I put them on because it is some, it's like, a, how do I word this? It just makes my driving experience so much less stressful. Um, I can just drive normal instead of worrying about the next set of brights that are going to blind me and being able to watch the white line and stay in my lane, especially if there's any kind of inclement weather. Um, and now that I'm on day shift, I'm actually driving most of my drive into work in the dark because it's winter time here. And I don't leave on time. So like right now it's 730 at night and it's dark. So I'm driving home in the dark. So I wear them when I'm driving both in the morning and at night now. Um, so I just want, I had just stated in the previous video that um, they might feel a little weird to wear. You might feel a little goofy. Um, but honestly, you're just wearing them in the car anyway. And you're going to take them off when you get out of the car. So I would recommend that everybody get a pair of yellow tinted glasses for driving at night. Especially if you drive back roads that are like two lane. It has been a, a game changer for me. So there's that little tidbit, PSA. Um, let's see, what else? It, oh, yeah. I mean, you can tell the date of the video, but it's January 10, 2020. It's still so weird to say that. It's probably going to be weird for like six months to say 2020. It's weird to write it. I've been writing a one for a decade. And so that's a big adjustment to switch it to a two. Um, yeah, that's just, I can't believe how fast last year went. And... I'd like to say that I'm hoping this year is going to go slower, but it's not. I know it's not. Um, so maybe just adjusting because I know the years are starting to fly by. Maybe I just need to adjust for that and plan that the year is going to fly by. And what do I want to get done in this year? Because it's going to go fast. Um, so, yeah. I can't believe how fast the last year went. Um... I don't, I'm pretty sure I talked about the puppy in the last update video. Uh, the puppy is growing fast. He's like a full size, um, what's taller than a lab? Maybe, I don't know, shepherds are kind of small too, but he's like a larger size shepherd size maybe. Um, I haven't tried to pick him up in a while, but he's got to be 70 pounds or better. Uh, his paws are now when he like steps in the snow his paws are wider than my foot um, his paws cover my hand so he's getting pretty big he's doing really well he's a super sweet puppy he's a relatively well behaved puppy um, I don't know if that's breed related or just because we're not super active crazy wild people the house is not a you know crazy wild place it's pretty calm um but as far as puppies go I mean he's got he's got his issues he you know has accidents in the house from time to time and he chews on things from time to time um and he bites you know and nibbles when he shouldn't but as far as puppies go he's a really good puppy um I'm very thankful and grateful that he's not a horrible puppy uh, there's nothing worse than trying to deal with a horrible dog, you know. You, you bring this creature into your life to love and care for, and, you know, sometimes they're super challenging, and I don't have the time and the patience for that. I've got enough challenging things in my life <laughs> than to deal with a puppy challenge. So I'm very thankful and grateful he is an awesome puppy. Uh, let's see. I have the phone in my lap, by the way, because my phone mount is in my car, even though it's still goofy. Um, so I don't really have a way to mount my phone, which is fine, whatever. Um, it is 9 degrees tonight. Uh, I think it was 20 degrees yesterday, but the day before was like 3 degrees. Uh, 5, was it 3? Negative 3? I think it was 
negative three. It started off like negative seven, and by the time I got home, it said negative three. Um, but that's to be expected. It's January. Holy shit, I'm speeding. Um, January, February in these northern states is always the worst. So we haven't had a ton of snow. We've had some snow, but it hasn't been bad. It's tolerable, I feel like, and I'm glad since I have a longer commute this year. Um, so yeah, I'm settling into my new role at work and really putting my people skills and my organizational skills, I don't know if I'd call them skills, but um, to, to the test and um, keeping really busy. It's quite the balance in you know, working with personalities coming in the door that are new and it's a new job for them and making sure that they get trained properly and then a whole new set of management to deal with. Um, new people I hadn't really dealt with a whole lot before and then my, I guess you could say my management reach has broadened a little bit so I'm dealing or I'm around with and dealing with more, more supervisors. Um, I'm more directly connected to the new plant manager uh, than I was on the production floor. So, you know, it's a whole new, it's a whole new level and a whole new ball game. And, um, I feel like, I feel like I'm handling it pretty well. Of course, I'm kind of an overachiever, so I would like to be doing, you know, great spectacular things and blowing everybody's socks off, um. I mean, I might be already to some degree, but it's not enough for me. I feel like I should be doing more faster, um, but it is what it is. It's hard to concentrate between balancing all those things, so. Um, and sometimes you have to have a lot of tough conversations. There's a lot of meetings, and sometimes there's things you need to have meetings about, and you have to deal with a personality that's maybe not taking you seriously and it can be a challenge to make not make somebody but to kind of get somebody on your side and get them to see your point of view when they might be um, non-familiar with you non-familiar with your personality um, or even dismissive towards you there's one supervisor that's very, uh, I don't want to say introverted, but like they hold a really high barrier. You know, it takes a while to break the ice. It takes a, a while to get them to open up a little bit and say good morning and, um, you know, do a little bit of chit chat. Um, but I've managed that so far. <laughs> turns out that supervisor is now leaving because they got a better job with better pay, but, and, well, not, yeah, a better job with better pay, better hours, and they've got small kids at home, so it's perfectly understandable, and then I had a situation that needed to be rectified, and I was dealing with, um, you know, I had brought it up to other people and was kind of getting the him and haw about it, and I was like, no, this is something that has to be fixed, and so I had to go to the next step up where the, you know, more closer to the root of the, the problem and that person had been, I felt like, um, rather dismissive of me, um, didn't really see me as a peer yet, probably still doesn't see me as a peer, I don't know, but, um, I had to find a way to get their attention, um, especially in a situation where I was actually super frustrated and almost to the point of angry. Um, but I had to figure out a way to come to them that would get their attention without them feeling like I was blaming them or attacking them. And um, I think I've pulled that off. We'll see. I got the conversation started, and that was the main thing. Uh, a lot of times in your work relationships, your family relationships, your friend relationships, um, it's important to plant those little seeds. And sometimes you just have to have a very subtle um, mention of something or kind of talk around something a little bit, not, maybe that's my passive aggressiveness coming out now that I said that out loud, but sometimes you just got to plant a little seed to get somebody thinking about something, um, and then come back later, 
you know, let that seed germinate a little bit and let it start sprouting a little bit before you um, come at it again. I found that to be a very useful technique and a very useful tool for a very long time now. Um, and I guess that's part of, you know, peopling and people skills and, I don't know, I guess self-awareness. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to... I don't know how to categorize that. Um, so, that's enough rambling, I think, for this go-round. Um, I think anything else is just going to be me giving updates, but I really wanted to kind of hone in on that self-awareness and emotional intelligence and hey since I brought it up if it's something you're into like there's a shit ton of videos on YouTube um there's a lot of people talking about it uh but I feel like not nearly enough people are talking about it so the more we can get people talking about it I think the uh greater awareness there will be overall um I know one person that talks about it heavily is Gary V and I didn't learn the phrase from him. Well, no, actually, I did learn the phrase from him, but it was something I was already doing. Uh, a couple of years prior to that, I had started kind of doing some self-awareness and emotional intelligence growth. And so when I heard it phrased, I was like, oh, there's a name for that. That's pretty cool. Um, and, you know, a little bit of, I do that. And, oh, I do that. And so, you know, Gary Vee is one person that talks about it. But I'm sure that you could just put in EQ, emotional intelligence, self-awareness, um, and bring up other other videos to, to listen to. Um, there's probably lots of books about it as well. Um, start some conversations. Get familiar with the topic. Find out ways to help people around you grow their emotional intelligence. Um, it can only do good things, in my opinion. So, all right, that's it for now. I will talk to y'all later. Everybody have a great weekend. Bye.